Hi and welcome to Off to Record, offered to you by Brussels Jazz Weekend, a free music festival coming to you every spring in Brussels. Ask any jazz lover and you'll find that everyone has that one certain record which really drew them into jazz. Now, if you were a young kid or a teenager at the end of the 1960s, it might as well have been this one. No, it doesn't have any hippie or rock influenced music on it, but the cover looked apart and the record label itself was pretty familiar if you were into a certain band that hailed from Liverpool. This is early 1968. After the death of their manager Brian Epstein in 1967, the Beatles decided to take matters into their own hands and founded their own record label, Apple Records. And in an infamous ad, they asked people to send in their tapes. So many fledgling creative artists did just that and they were literally swamped in, in tapes and audition tapes. But in effect, most of the acts signed to the new label were people who were already familiar with the Beatles. There was James Taylor, for instance, who was introduced to them by Peter Asher, who was the brother of Jane Asher, then girlfriend of Paul McCartney. There was Billy Preston, an organ player, who they already knew from their Hamburg days in the early 60s. There was Yoko Ono, who of course came through John. And then there was the modern jazz quartet. Four black jazz musicians in tailored suits who didn't really fit the bill. They were the odd ones out in a very weird puzzle. The modern jazz quartet wasn't exactly the definition of a new fledgling band. They were already formed in 1952 by On Vibes Mill Jackson. On double bass we had uh, Percy Heat. The original drummer was Kenny Clark, later replaced by uh, Connie Kay. And on piano was uh, also the composer and creative director of the modern jazz quartet, John Lewis, who brought to their swinging bop music a sense of classical refinement. He was a big fan of the music of Bach, uh, for instance. They were one of the few black bands that grew out to be the darling of the concert-going public all over the world. The modern jazz quartet stood for class and sophistication and the kind of crossover jazz they played was perfect for a public of tailored suits and cocktail dresses. By 1968, this band was so well known that Apple Records didn't even bother to send out a bio. They didn't even send out a press photo to the media because there was nothing that Apple could really add to the ongoing success story that was the MJQ. And so it came to pass that the most revered cool jazz band for a very short while joined forces with the hippest and most popular band in pop business, the Beatles. And for very young fans who were willing to follow their heroes everywhere, it also meant that this record was their very first introduction into that mysterious world of jazz music. Now, is this one of the best jazz albums out there? Why? No, but it does find one of the most seminal jazz bands doing what they do best, make excellent music that suits many tastes. Under the Jasmine Tree finds them ever so slightly inspired by world music and some compositions have a distinct Eastern or Arabian flavor about them which makes it a sort of Sheerazade, Tales of a Thousand and One Nights kind of affair. And it's a perfect stepping stone to jazz for anyone prepared to listen. The cover by British illustrator Alan Aldrich really sells the record, doesn't it? It's the kind of music suited for any groovy party. So you can take your cocktail, flip on your lava lamp 
and have a groovy night. <laughs> Off the Record is a jazzy online video series brought to you by the Free City Festival Brussels Jazz Weekend. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't miss a single episode.